Hey everyone, what about here, and welcome to Hard Space Shipbreaker, or welcome back. They just added Story Act 1, and so I'm here to try it out. I played a bunch of the, I guess, sandbox mode back when this first came out in Early Access, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a ton of fun, and mostly played until I ran out of content, and I was like, yeah, I'll come back to this later. And, well, it's later. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to do this in open shift. Two reasons why. One, I'm a lazy bones. Two, I... Stuff like the shift timer and even the oxygen drain, I like them for raising the tension, but they quickly become monotonous and annoying. And personally, I would love it if you actually just uh, got to get upgrades that extend the shift timer perpet yeah, potentially perpetually. Same thing with the, uh, the oxygen drain, but I'm perfectly comfortable with just turning them off for now, uh, at least for how this is currently designed. It would be cool if you, yeah, got like an oxygen recycler for uh, 50,000 credits and, you know, maybe had to pay it off or any number of things or, I don't know. It'd be interesting if there was interest on the debt too, but I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so we'll see once we get in how they've changed progression. Apparently it's a lot longer. They've changed a lot of different things too. Uh, so I'm excited to play this, but uh, the other reason why I'm doing open shift is every time the shift ends, you go back to the ship, you get some cutscenes, and that ends up taking like two or three minutes. By just doing open shift, that actually should save us some time. So I'm going to turn off everything, and we're just going to go from that. Uh, we're just going to speed right through it. Humankind has industrialized much of the solar system. Earth has deteriorated into a place of squalor and decay. In orbit, a new breed of workers emerged. The Shipbreaker. The labor is extremely dangerous. But for a select few, the hazard pay is worth the risk. But do I actually do anything here? Oh. Maybe? Shipbreaker application. Pave the way to the galaxy program. Update on your application status. Hi. Okay, this is a little loud. Every game is always a little loud when it launches. The main menu is quiet, but still. Okay. Whew. November 9th, 2329. <laughs> Coastal Provinces, Conclave 7, Employment Confirmation Form, Link Salvage Division, blah. Greetings, Citizen, blah. Congratulations on acceptance into the Link's Pave the Way to the Galaxy program. From over 124.8 million applicants, you were chosen based on above average slash exceptional physical and cognitive ability. Participation in this program can be lucrative and rewarding, depending on a willingness to follow the vision and processes of Lynx Corporation. You've been assigned to Salvage Station 42, designation Morrigan. This station currently has no additional personnel, but if you're able to demonstrate the ability to build and grow a profitable operation, a number of exciting opportunities await you. Remember, employment in the Pave the Way to the Galaxy program is at the sole discretion of the Lynx Corporation and can be revoked at any time. Acts of insubordination or malice will not be tolerated. On receipt of your electronic signature, a shuttle will be deployed immediately to your current location to deliver you to your post. Training will commence immediately on arrival. Finalize your info on the following pages to confirm employment. Okay. Account name. Links work effort tracking TM and social employee hub TM require an employee account name. Please enter an account name below. Profanity or anti-corporate slang slash jargon is not accepted. Select revival package. We proudly offer our body and mind revival program to new employees. What are the details of your selected revival package? Terran Health Board Advisory. Cloning has a 0.02% chance of DNA corruption. Can I can I do this? Will it stop me? Let's let's give it a shot. <laughs> nope, it worked fine. Uh can I go back? Nope. Well, I guess we'll eat the rich. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Meal preference. Chicken plastic free, vegetarian or Entomitarian. Oh, that's kind of fun. So, I love the idea of plastic-free just because. 
Anyway, vegetarian. Okay, so please agree to each statement. I have no criminal record in the Terran or Martian zones. A record of in the Jovian frontier is acceptable. I'm not a member of and have never associated with a workers' union or other labor interest. I've completed my annual medical exa exam and have been cleared of having Macaulay's lung. I have no commercial or real estate interest on Luna, in the asteroid belt, or in the nation's state of Arizona. I will bring a positive attitude and problem-solving mindset to work every day. I understand and accept the health risks associated with long-term exposure to Vander Wall's field, to a Va Vander Wall's field, and I will vote for Chancellor Chun Zhang in the Pan American Senate election. That's a, that should be illegal. <gasps> okay, you guys ready for some fine print? Shipbreaker employment terms and conditions. This agreement is made as of the 9th day of November 2329 between Lynx Corporation of uh, Department of Salvage and Reclamation Incorporated under the laws of Solar Industries Commission Lynx and myself, Citizen B -B 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 -E, the Rich. Employee hereby grants permission to Lynx the authority to collect, analyze, and u utilize their biometric data for use to wait for use to better the lives and well-being of them and their co-workers as well as any other purpose employee hereby grants permission to links the authority to perform psychological tests on them at any time with or without their knowledge employee is not entitled to compensation for participation in these tests but may receive additional sugar cube rations employee hereby grants permission to links the authority to garnish their wages if their actions or lack thereof result in any real or potential losses for the company and or any of its affiliates employee hereby grants permission to links the authority in perpetuity to record their own dna and to create new entities with that DNA with no restrictions or limits. Furthermore, employee agrees to pay a nominal fee for this service in the event of their death while performing the duties of their position. Links may execute these entities at any time for acts of gross negligence. Employee hereby grants permission to Links the authority to study, manipulate, reciprocate, and duplicate any and all of my gray and white matter in, at any time in the unfortunate event of my total and complete loss of memory. Employee hereby grants permission to Lynx the authority to transfer any and all unpaid debts owed to Lynx or any other of its affiliates to their next of kin in the event they are terminated, disappear, and or perma perish. Lynx reserves the right to terminate this contract at any time without notice or payment in lieu, with no requirements of sufficient co cause. Okay. That's freaking tyrannical. Of course it would be. Dang, that hype train grew. I'll respond to that in a hot second. I forgot how good the soundtrack for this game is. Each day he steps into the yard to earn his wages working hard. I pray to the stars and heaven above. Turn my daddy to those he loves. If there comes a time when he and death meet, bless the next cutter that takes his seat. That's really creepy. Yo. Your automated Lynx onboarding experience will now begin. Please observe this important message. Space, boundless promise, limitless resources, a brighter future. It's here that hard workers like you, the backbone of civilization, 
will help us pave the way to the galaxy. I am Calicia Rye Paulson, president of Lynx Corporation Salvage Division. When my great-great-grandfather, Exeter, founded Lynx, he foresaw a remarkable opportunity among the stars. His vision eventually brought us the rail gate. Now, spanning all the way to Jupiter, these are the veins connecting all of modern civilization. And the people flowing through them are its lifeblood. The rail gates reinvigorated humanity and are key to our continued progress. You have been selected from among thousands of candidates to join the Lynx family. This is more than just a job. It's an opportunity to be part of the largest, most successful, and most pioneering company in human history. Your dream may be to forge your own destiny one day. Well, work hard, heed your superiors, believe in the Lynx vision. Do this, and you too will get your chance. Your first step is to join our EverWork program. The greatest gift we give our employees turning death into an ongoing opportunity for learning and growth. With Lynx, death is a fresh start. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I want a fresh start. Press to begin genetic extraction. Video observation complete. To finalize onboarding, your genetic sequence will now be extracted for use with the Lynx EverWork Asset Replacement Program. Don't worry. Pain levels during extraction are largely tolerable. Yeah. Please note, as outlined in section 31 of your employment agreement, the process of genetic extraction will destroy your original body. <laughs> Beginning extraction now. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Boy, howdy! Everwork is asset replacement successful. Genetic sequence stored. Congratulations! It's now safe to die. Shapebreakers are responsible for the cost of biomaterials used in the Everwork process, and an additional fee is required for deaths that occur outside working hours. You may now proceed with salvage training. Good luck! And people wonder why I'm somewhat anti-corporate. Jesus Christ. Look at all this money. <laughs> ah! Emigration duty fee. That's 122 million right there. <laughs> <laughs> Luggage handling, including gratuity, 35%. One, uh, 1.2 million dollars. Luggage handling, 200... I mean, I'm sure inflation as of 2329 isn't actually that bad. We we straight up did the... um, Like, we did the math when I first did this in Early Access, and it was like... This isn't actually that, that outrageous, uh, at least from what I remember. Um, like... I, I think that at, like, modern inflation rate, this is still, like, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, but not, like, that much. I If somebody wants to do the inflation rate uh, from, you know, 2021 to 2329, 300 years of inflation at our current rate, um, I'd actually love the math on that one again, just because. Because, yeah, what are, we lo what are we looking at? This is uh, eh, just $1.2 billion. You know what? I'm just going to do the math again on camera, because why the hell not? Okay, so we did the math, and uh, j just for people watching on YouTube at the very least, it's 1.025 to the 300th power, give or take. Giving you an in interest rate of one th or interest rate, effectively $1 is worth $1,650, 300 years in the future. So, by this merit, $1.2 billion is about three quarters of a million dollars in modern day standards. That's a hefty debt, but that's not actually that ridiculous.
all things considered. But that's still pretty ridiculous. I mean, by that own merit, uh, de-lousing costs a thousand bucks. De-gossing, 500 bucks. And, like, just... This shit is ridiculous. It's fine. I just wanted to comment on, on how goofy this is. You are in space now. That is a good point. But you'd think it would be cheaper to get people up into space in the future. Yeah, honestly, uh, just just to finish it up a little bit, that's actually about how expensive certain medical treatments in the U.S. can be. So, so realistically, like this, when you're presented with this uh, this giant dollar sign, it's like, oh, that's terrible. And the answer is no. Actually, the price tag it might even be the most reasonable part of this this game so far. Okay. There we go. Gonna be just fine. There we go. There you go. Plenty of folks feel a bit woozy with their first spare. Anyway, welcome aboard. The name's Weaver. I'm the foreman for yourself and a couple of the other shipbreakers in this region. This here's Morgan Station. She may not look like much right now, but once we boot her up, She'll purr like a kitten. That's it. So that's where all the salvage gets collected to be picked up by the transfer crew. All right. Let's test out your orientation control. Do me a favor and look up at that cargo elevator up above. Just in case you ever turn yourself out of whack, use your roll thrusters to reorient. All right. Now let's get you flying. Activate Motion sickness warning. This game does now. make people very sick. Try moving around. So if you have motion now, sickness problems, this is not going to help. Uh -huh. Looks good. Now to finalize these movement checks, I need you to fly to these waypoints. Okay, so waypoint markers, that's what we're doing. Oh, I did use shift for, uh, so my old hotkeys are still here. Till there were some, uh, uh, complications with my last revive. Those were early days in the tech, though, so never you mind about that. Oh, almost forgot about the most important thing, brakes. Get yourself going at a decent clip, and then test them out, why don't you? Alright, looks like the bay here was left in a bit of a mess. We're gonna clean this scrap up. Gonna activate the furnaces... now. Ah, dang thing, would you just... There you go. So these furnaces are used to melt down soft metals. Should go without saying that these things are as hot as all get out. So try not to drift into them by accident. Okay, let's get a handle on your grapple tool. This fella here is a shipbreaker's bread and butter. This is how we move salvage around. Activate the beam and hold it to grab an object and move it around, if it's not too heavy. Give it a go and move one of these pieces into either furnace. So when you're holding an object with weird. the grapple, you can retract the beam. This will pull a light object to you. If it's heavier than you, it'll pull you towards it. Okay. It says furnace. Right. Nice that is furnace. Up all I don't remember what the other one was called. Uh, let's move on to the bigger nanocarbon chunks now, shall we? You may have already noticed that these are too heavy to move with your gravel. I'm enabling your scanner so we can check out their structural makeup. Go ahead and boot it up. 
This mode of your scanner lets you assess an object's structure. What I want you to focus on right now are these cut points. All right. Control is giving me the go-ahead to get you cut. You have quick access to all your tools through your HUD. Just open up the tool selector and choose the cutting tool. Your cutting tool has two modes. The first one is the stinger. It's designed for precision vaporization of cut points like this. You ready to perform some zero-g surgery cutter? Well, let's split this scrap so it's light enough to move. Let's try this again. Drop a piece of scrap into the furnace on either side of your bay. That's how you do it. Okay, let me boot up the processor so you can salvage these. Do me a favor and look towards one of them there so I can see if they activate right. Yeah, perfect. Wish me luck here, Cutter. Me and technology ain't always the best of friends. Hey, all right, we're in business. Now swap over to your grapple and toss one of them pieces you separated right in there. This weaver has a visual now. Did he not? I guess if he didn't, well, okay. I just well, always assumed that's exactly what he looked like. Let's go after that large aluminum chunk over there. Now this beast is way too heavy to move as is. It's also too dense for your stinger to break it down, and there are no structures. He also looks like one of my cousins. <laughs> of. We're gonna have to switch over to the split saw mode of your cutting tool and start slicing this thing down to size. Go ahead and switch cut modes now. Now try changing the angle of the cut. We're in business. I've unlocked the trigger on your cutting tool. It'll split that big chunk clean in two. Go ahead and give her a whirl. I'm gonna turn on your salvage indicator so you can track how much work is left to do. This thing will track how much you've salvaged and how much you've lost. For now, let's try and hit that first goal marker. And that's what it's all about, Cutter. The more salvage goals you complete, the closer you'll get to hitting your certifications and ranking up. There we go. Should be good enough. Deposit accepted. Into the furnace you go. Burn, baby, burn. Great first shift in the yard, Cutter. Let's head on over to your hab, and I'll show you the ropes there. Now fly on over back to the master jack. I'll put a marker on it so you can find it easy. When you get there, head on in, and we'll get started. Great first shift in the yard, Cutter. Let's head on over to your hab, and I'll show you the ropes there. Now fly on over back to the master jack. I'll put a marker on it so you can find it easy. When you get there, head on in, and we'll get started. It still blows my mind that the people that made this game are the people that made the Homeworld games, and that they didn't decide to make them set in the same universe. It would have been so cool to have them be, like, synced up. Alright. Congrats, Cutter. You're already on your way up. Head on into your hab, and we'll check things out. Okay, so we've unlocked some stuff. Easy peasy. Welcome to your new home, Cutter. Has everything you need. This is officially called a ready-made long-term employee habitation something or other. But around here, we just call it your hab. Okay, let's have a look at your employee terminal. Now let's get caught up on career progression and certification. I've sent you a message with an explanation now. Go on and give it a read. I love the fact that unread messages will inc incur an hourly data storage fee after 10 days. I would be in so much trouble normally. Hey. Oh, mini me. Chief of perfect salvage of over 98%. Well, that's convenient. All right, let's take a look at these. Clear as mud. 
<laughs> Don't worry. I'm here to walk you through the process, and soon enough I'm going to introduce you to some of the other shipbreakers. Most of them are willing to help you out, too. All right, let's start a new shift and pick your first ship to work on. All right, so the certification system is our proprietary career progression tool for all of our shipbreakers. It provides each employee with a filling and promising future as part of the Lynx family. Certification ranks range from 1 as the entry point all the way up to rank 30, which is reserved only for our most accomplished employees. As advised to view the certification tab in your HAB terminal as a guide to gain access to more tools, upgrades, ships, and, ha uh, ships and hazard levels. Proving yourself as a loyal and skilled employee will reward you with fresh new challenges in the work bay. Good luck, shipbreaker. Let's see. Maybe try uh, leaving messages unread to test. I could. I all right, fine. We'll wait a couple days before I do. Uh, quite a number of days before I read any of those messages, because it does tell you where your fee, like what fees you're this paying. This is the catalog that shows you which ships you have access to from the shipyard. Every day, you can choose to continue working on the ship you've got, or start a fresh one. Go ahead and pick one, anyone, and we'll get to work. All right. Hopefully we get out of the actual tutorial mode soon. I probably should have just skipped it, but I wanted to hear what was different. I don't know if the devs plan on supporting custom ships, but I really hope they do. I hope so, too. I honestly wish, hope they work on it sooner than later. She's all yours, Cutter. Your primary goal is to reach rank three. Now try to remember, nanocarbon goes in the processor, aluminum goes in the furnace. Try to salvage the entire ship if you can. We call it using the whole buffalo. You'll hit your certs faster that way and start knocking out that debt of yours. I'll be observing and giving you any help if you need it. Good luck, oh. Cutter. We out. The, uh, the door's already off for me. That's actually really handy. It's probably just for these. Man. It's gonna be kind of nice not having a time limit on these. Obviously, I'm still gonna want to go as fast as possible just because that makes my life that much easier. Yeah, let's just pop the sides off. Unfortunately, I don't have tethers, which makes this whole process uh, a lot harder and a lot longer. Oh, immediate other problem. I forgot. Taking the actual, like, locker or locker, the airlock off might actually not be that easy. But it's fine. Are these loose? Yeah, this, this is loose. So I should actually be able to just fly out of here. Hmm. There we go. I was like, I'm pretty sure I can get these off at this point. It's kind of difficult to remove. I remember. So is oxygen not limited anymore? It is, but you can turn it off. Uh, because I said to myself that that sounded inconvenient. and it, I mean, it was inconvenient back in the day. Uh, back when I first started playing this game, it was kind of one of those where it's like, I don't necessarily hate limitations like oxygen, but oh, shit, is this this is loose. I guess it's because the airlock was preemptively removed. So I didn't have to cut that out. Valuable object processed. Like, if there was a more aggressive upgrade system, and maybe there is uh, for oxygen, uh, you know, oxygen tanks from, like, a rebreather to, like, a full-on just infinite oxygen eventually. Uh, maybe I would have looked into it, because I think that would be a good opportunity for, like, heavy progression system. But, uh, for me, especially seeing as this is still very much an early access, I would rather just kind of have a nice chill day instead. Got my starts 
salvaging back down Earthside in the droid scrapping business. You know what made me come up here? Well, one day we got a batch of this particular model in. One of them kinds with synthetic skin and everything. We almost never saw people looking ones like that. They were always too expensive to manufacture. Seems someone found a warehouse full of them. Mothballed for, oh, 20 years or so. Since the AI ban took effect. Probably bought the whole lot for pennies, thinking they could turn a tidy profit with the salvage. No word of a lie. These things looked exactly like my stepbrother did. Even had the same slack-jawed expression. Now, Jed and I wasn't exactly pals or nothing. All the same, I couldn't bring myself to start smashing that dopey face. And that's when I looked into getting on with Lynx. Tell you what, it's a sight better to cut up something that doesn't look like a family relation. Anyway, I'm running on. I'll clear the channel. Holler if there's anything giving you grief up there, Cutter. Weave her out. I love the fact that uh, we're potentially going to have a lot more like character details like that. Please revisit your training. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is furnace. Yeah, some of these are mixed in a way that I'm not going to be able to clearly cut, but that's fine. There we go. We got this. It's It certainly helps going into this with foreknowledge of like, yeah, this is exactly how to cut these ships apart. But yeah, not having to worry about, was it a 15 minute? I think it was like a straight up 15 minute time limit, which is just kind of tough. Uh, let's see. Only immediate problem is right now we're pretty weak. We don't have any of the good bits, so I can't really move things around too, too smoothly. We definitely don't have tethers. I miss tethers. I don't remember having tethers right from the get-go last time either. I, I think... Okay. It looks like this whole thing goes in the processor. I think tethers you had to unlock as well. But yeah, tethers are just kind of handy. For those of you that have not seen or played this game before, uh, tethers effectively just let you uh, grab a piece. I guess it was in the, um, the, the beginning section, but you could straight up just be like, all right, connect this to that, and the tether would just pull it in for you. It was super lazy mode when it came to uh, depositing big pieces. Alright, yeah, we're good. This whole thing is more or less just nanocarbon. I like the new UI, though I kind of wish the task list wasn't quite as um, visible. Because the task list is is a little overbearing. Maybe I can turn that off. I've gone looking. Probably should. There's a lot of just random trash. I don't think I can actually pick up. Yeah, I, I can't pick up and move the little stuff. It'd be kind of neat if there was like a junk vacuum. There we go. We're good. Okay. Gotta make sure it doesn't end up in the furnace. Object accepted for Race not want not. Holy Credits crap, deposited. what? Okay, I'm here. I just want to make sure uh, too much of this ship doesn't go sailing off into the wild blue yonder. It does move. Like, it's, it's not like space where uh, there's no friction. We're in kind of a light gravity field, presumably. There's a junk vacuum. You just bump it towards the furnace. I mean, I guess that's 
valid. Okay, so reactor's in there. We're just gonna leave that for a little while longer. Processing valuable objects. Credits awarded. Salvage gained. Credits awarded. Let's see. I am not the most well-equipped dude ever. So let's take a look at this. I think almost this entire corridor is meant for the furnace. I don't think I see anything else. The only problem is it is huge. Yeah, I straight up cannot uh, cannot move this thing. Uh, oh, do they ever do they ever fix the phantom cut points? Because that was something that I I struggled with not infrequently when playing this that I would cut something and I just have like a loose section that I oh how is this even still connected oh connected through there oh yeah it's one of these big pegs I... nope okay most definitely cannot deal with those. Is it still connected? How? Oh. Okay, there we go. Now this is loose. Huge, but loose. Let's see. I'm sure many people enjoy the pressure of the 15-minute shift timer. Chance of running out of oxygen. But personally, I'm someone who's able to pay attention to my surroundings and oxygen non-stop. Uh, let's see. The oxygen, even with upgrades, became an annoyance. I think that's the thing. Is that, yeah, it wasn't... It was interesting, I think, for maybe the first couple hours. And then after a little bit, it was just like... I don't really like uh, having to run back for oxygen. Okay, then. Raw Pretty material sure. processed. Credit deposited. Is that just loose? Yes. Okay. Mount everything into the furnace. For me, it's more of just a. Uh, I just like having the the kind of casual nature, so I can focus on getting everything, as opposed to like spit firing chairs down. Without any real, without any real sense of like, this goes here. It was just like, well, chairs are not not valuable to me. Therefore, I need to just toss them. Okay. Now, did I? Oh, I thought I saw some braces here, but I guess I was wrong. All right. Oh, well, this should be big enough at this point, or big enough, small enough that I can actually move it around. Oh, that was, that was the beam. I was like, uh, why is that red? Okay, here we go. Get in there. Perfect. That should be enough. What about you? Furnace, you go. That's gratifying. What about this processor? Is that just this whole thing? Yeah, it doesn't look like I can get further in. Oh. There's no reactor. We just have the we just have the thruster cap and nothing more. Fair enough. I don't actually remember if the thruster caps are worth much. But that's fine. I think 
I think the rest of this is good to go. Object accepted for processing. Credits deposited. Don't go into the furnace. It's happened a couple of times where the furnace is just like, yoink! It just takes it forever. Do we even have any chairs in here? Not... It looks like this is a pretty easy just push into the furnace. Um, I mean, I guess I could remove the superstructure, but I think I'm just going to throw it all in. Valuable object process. Separating out what goes where here probably isn't that necessary. Cutter account credited. There we go. In you go. Anything left for me? No, of course not. Oh, enter the have to rank up. That makes sense. Get in there. Valuable object processed. Okay, maybe I should have cut them apart. We lost a fair bit. I love the fact that it actually tells you how much you wasted. That's a really that's a really neat system, and I dig that. Is there gonna be multiplayer for this at some point? I don't think so. But holy shit, I would love that. Teaming up with somebody else. You know, having one person be the uh the cutter mole and like another person being uh you know, being in charge of actually moving stuff in. So we destroyed an amount of aluminum, but I think we're fine. Certification review. New certification level attained. License level increased. Boy, howdy. That's going to take a while. All right, let's see if I can get Looking some upgrades. Good, now go ahead and pick another ship. All right, we have more messages. Certification, here we go. Oh, I can't, I can't get equipment yet, so we're still kind of in the tutorial. Well, it's fine. Uh, let's see. Let's not for a hot second. Use worth the most. This one. So this might be where they tutorialize oxygen and some other bits. Yeah, dismantling the Death Star and squads. Gosh, how cool would that be? Yeah, team up or even a race would be amazing. So they removed all the limiters? Oh, uh, you mean like oxygen and time? Um, I I removed them more so. Hi, hold up a second there, Cutter. Because you've increased your rank, we're gonna give you the next greatest ship. Now this one will be full of machinery, electronics, furniture, all stuff that Lynx can collect and resell. You're going to want to toss those items on the barge. That's the uh, big green thing below you. Go ahead and have a look. Toss any valuable objects or components down there. Now don't worry about breaking anything. There's a dampening field that'll catch everything. It works great most of the time. Let's give it a go. For now, at least, this is a pretty good stopping point. I'm uh, just looking at the uh, the new UI. I love the fact that it shows these goals here. Uh, that, you know, depending on how well you sal salvage and how much you salvage, you get uh, whatever the currency points are called. Uh, links points? LP? I think that's exactly it. Uh, but so you want to go for that, that uh, three diamond because that's where you get the most. Realistically, you still want to fill the meter up as much as possible because uh, your your certification ranking is purely tied to your level. And so the more money that you make every single ship, every single day, uh, the more uh, certification ranking you get as well. I don't know, it's a really neat system and I'm enjoying it thoroughly. And I thought it was gonna feel boring without the time limit. And I think I do lose a little bit without the time limit or the oxygen. Cause like, it was always a mad scramble, and I might even do a couple of rounds with the timer turned back on once we get back up to the bigger ships. But it's one of those where I, I actually do feel like I'm going through this game faster without having to worry about that, because I made dumb mistakes. And also, uh, I, would, I would often do, like, half of a day. 
you know, I'd have like half a day's work left and I'd be like, yeah, but that's the expensive stuff. I got to stick around for that extra half day. And it was never quite worth it. And so by just having no time limits for shifts, I get maximum value for not minimum time, but you know, I'm maximizing my value per time ratio. And I think that's a good thing. I love this game. I can't wait to play more of it. And uh, from what I've seen, there's at least a couple of new ship types uh, that I want to mess around with. Unfortunately, it's a little buggy and crashed on me uh, twice. Uh, though I guess only one got caught on camera. It, it crashed when I was trying to quit the game, so I'm not really sure where that counts. But uh, so there's there's a couple of rough edges on this one. But I always knew there was gonna. I mean, it's early access, is what it is. But I'm glad to have an excuse to come back to Hard Space Shipbreaker because it's just that much. It's just fun and it's unique. There's nothing else like it. And I kind of wish there was, but I'm totally fine just putting my time in on this one. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so I guess with all this said, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Because, yeah, I, I mean, for starters, I've got a good, what, two dozen videos on YouTube on the earlier state of this game, which is honestly more of the same. Uh, so go check that out. And, yeah, we're going to play through the entirety of Chapter 1. And then eventually we'll come back and do the other chapters when they're out. I, I'll try not to start over unless they force me to do so. Just because, as much as I like this game, I really want to get into the more complex ships. And grinding out the lower ones is a little tougher. I kind of wish there was actually a campaign, campaign speed. You know, if I could level twice as fast, I don't think I'd really feel like I'm losing out on much. But then again, this game is mostly just kind of a zen grinding simulator. So, I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, I guess one other, I'm not going to say a, a warning, but I do get a little bit, um, uh, I don't know, my anti-corporate side comes out playing this game. It confronts you with it constantly, so I, I guess I just can't escape that, uh, but it is what it is. So if that's the sort of thing that bothers you, you might want to grain of salt some of the things I say. I don't know. Anyway, so with all that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.